hello students today we will discuss the bony features on this uh, given bone this is the original skull which you may have in your uh, exams and you will find this bone in your dissection hall so first we will see what are the features present in this line this is your midline of the base of skull so when you will see this midline if you will start from anterior end now this is your uh, incisive fossa or you can say it is incisive uh, foramen which receives the incisive canals now when you will see the next to that this is your two part of the maxillary bone these are known as palatine process of maxillary bone now here you can see that this is a cross shaped suture now this is known as cruciform suture clear now behind this horizontal line you will find the two projections these are the part of palatine bone these are known as horizontal plates of palatine bone clear now here you will have the teeth and these is this is your upper jaw and it is formed by the alveolar process of maxilla now when you will see the posterior end of this this is known as maxillary tuberosity so you will have this maxillary tuberosity now on the hard palate if you will see you will find these two foramens which are big in size now these foramens are known as greater palatine foramen from the greater palatine foramen there is a groove now this groove is facing towards the incisive foramen clear now the next thing is that here you can see these are the small foramens now these is for small foramens which are visible here are the lesser palatine foramen these are the lesser palatine foramen now these lesser palatine foramens are present on the pyramidal process now you have to keep this thing in mind that pyramidal process is a part of palatine bone now i am having this all pin i am inserting this all pin in these foramens and these are known as lesser palatine foramen clear so you have to keep this thing in mind that lesser palatine foramen may be more than one in number this is the greater palatine foramen now this is your posterior free margin of hard palate now just in front of the posterior free margin you will find this elevation this elevated area is known as crest this is known as crest of the palatine bone which is known as palatine crest clear now the another important thing is that when you will go behind the hard palate in this part you will find a projection is known as posterior nasal spine so this is the posterior nasal spine clear now above that you should have the posterior free border of the vomer bone which is missing here because the vomer has been broken down so you can see only the upper part of the vomer the middle portion of the vomer is not here in this bone so otherwise you will find the posterior free border of the vomer bone which divides this posterior nasal opening into the right and left half then if you will go posteriorly you will find here this is the middle bony bar which is broader now this broad middle bony bar is formed by the fusion of the body of a sphenoid and basilar part of the occipital bone then you will have the pharyngeal tubercle at this point this pharyngeal tubercle is important landmark here now behind that you will have the foramen magnum now this anterior point of foramen magnum is known as basion now this is the foramen magnum now from the posterior margin of foramen magnum you will have the external occipital crest this crest will end at the your uh, external occipital protuberance so in this midline if you will see what are the features we have discussed so first you will start from anterior side this is your incisive fossa then you will have the cruciform suture then you will have the posterior nasal spine posterior free margin of the vomer bone then you will have this uh, junction of the body of sphenoid and basilar bone then you will have pharyngeal tubercle then you will have foramen magnum then you will have the crest and crest will end at the external occipital protuberance clear so these are the midline areas now we will see the other features on the norma basalis now there is a one more important thing is about the ala of your vomer bone so when you will see the uh, upper part of the vomer bone you can see that here this vomer is dividing into the two plates now these bifurcation of the upper part of the vomer bone is known as ala or you can say the plates of the vomer bone 
clear now here you can see that there is a pterygoid process now this pterygoid process you can see is having the two plates one is the lateral plate so this is the lateral plate of the pterygoid process and this is the medial plate of the pterygoid process clear when you will trace this uh, pterygoid medial plate you will find that at the upper end of this you will have this depression now this depression is known as scaphoid fossa so this is a very important question for your exam sometimes you have this landmark identify this depression you have to check that this depression present at the upper end of medial pterygoid plate and it is known as scaphoid fossa now this gap this fossa between the lateral plate and medial plate is known as pterygoid fossa so this is the pterygoid fossa and this is the scaphoid fossa clear now each plate is having two surface so this is the lateral surface of the lateral plate this is the medial surface of the lateral plate this is the lateral surface of medial plate and this is the medial surface of medial plate now this medial surface of medial plate continue with this lateral wall of the nose so you you know that this is the nose so this uh, medial surface of the medial plate become the part of your lateral wall of nose clear now here there are two very small very small foramina or you can say the canal one is uh, known as vomero vaginal canal another is known as palatino vaginal canal now when you will see these two canals these are the very thin canals and it is difficult to always appreciate these canals so i am trying to show you these two canals in this bone now here this is a first canal now this is the canal where i am passing this wire now this wire is going into a canal now this canal is known as palatino vaginal canal clear now there is a one more canal in that i am passing the all pin so that you can appreciate the two different place of these two canal so this tip of my all pin is right now in a space is known as vomero vaginal canal and that wire is right now in this space and this is your palatino vaginal canal clear so these are the two very thin canals which are present here in this area now when you will go Oh, uh, in the different areas of this skull there is a one more area is known as infratemporal region now this is the infratemporal region because this is the temporal region this is infratemporal region in this infratemporal region the first thing is comes is this crest now this is the infratemporal crest of the greater wing of sphenoid now here you can see that this is the vertical part of the greater wing this is the horizontal part of the greater wing and at this angle you will have this crest so this is the infra temporal crest of the greater wing of sphenoid clear now here you can see this vertical fissure now this is the fissure which is between the posterior part of the maxilla and anterior part of the pterygoid process so this is known as pterygo maxillary fissure through this you can enter into the pterygo palatine fossa clear now what are the other features you should able to appreciate in this norma basalis now when you will go more posteriorly you will find a irregular foramen now this is the foramen lacerum clear now there is a one more important foramen which you are able to appreciate here this is the foramen oval now when you will see the foramen oval now this foramen oval is present uh, in the sphenoid bone and behind this foramen you will find a projection now this projection is known as spine of sphenoid now on the tip of the spine of sphenoid you will have one more foramen this is foramen spinosum so when you will see the foramen oval you will find a, a small foramen behind so the posterior one is the spinosum and this oval one is the foramen oval clear now this is the scaphoid fossa which i already told you now between the scaphoid fossa and the foramen oval sometimes you will find a one more foramen that is known as foramen vesalius so in this bone right now there is a foramen vesalius so this is the foramen vesalius now i can pass this wire through this foramen vesalius and this foramen vesalius if present it allow the imagery vein to enter inside so here you can see that right now this wire is inside a foramen and this foramen is the location of foramen vesalius so what is the exact location of foramen vesalius it is between the scaphoid fossa so where is the scaphoid fossa 
this is the area of the scaphoid fossa and this is the foramen oval so in between you will have this foramen vesalius clear now what is the next is that you will have one more important thing is known as sulcus tubi now the sulcus tubi is the area which provide support to the auditory tube which part of auditory tube cartilaginous part now suppose if this is the uh, cut part of the refill now where you have to put this so this is the area where you will have the sulcus tubi now this is the area now this tip now this this tip of my this refill is now entered inside the uh, bone and this is providing your entry of cartilaginous part of auditory tube and there is a shallow groove now this on this side you can see this groove now this groove is known as sulcus tubi now this sulcus tubi is a area between the posterior border of sphenoid bone and this petrous part of temporal bone now this sulcus tubi medial end when it will go here it is supported by the medial pterygoid plate now here you have to keep this thing in mind very clearly it is visible that this tube is come in contact with the medial plate not with the lateral plate now this is the lateral plate clear and you can see here that this tube is coming in contact with the medial plate so here it will come like this clear now when you will have this type of the arrangement you can see that there is a very small elevation is seen now if you zoom this here now you can appreciate so this is the auditory tube now if i will remove this refill here now you can see that there is a small projection is seen now where is the projection now this is the tip of the projection now this projection is known as processus tuberius so processus tuberius is a feature of medial pterygoid plate not the lateral plate please keep this thing in mind because you have to keep this thing in mind that this upper notch of the medial pterygoid plate supports the medial end of cartilaginous part of the auditory tube and just below that you have a small elevation and this projection is known as processus tuberius clear then what are the other features you will see in this uh, skull so this is the area where you will have the formation of tm joint so this is known as mandibular fossa now in this mandibular fossa if you will see very clearly this fossa is having a fissure now this fissure which is present here is a fissure is between the tympanic plate so this part is the tympanic plate of your uh, temporal bone and this is your squamous part of the temporal bone so this fissure is known as squamo tympanic fissure now behind this tympanic plate you will have the external acoustic meatus clear so this is again the important thing to understand that this mandibular fossa is having a fissure clear now behind that now this is your Uh, a big foramen is known as jugular fossa what is that jugular fossa now anterior to the jugular fossa you will have the carotid canal so you can see that this is your position of carotid canal so here is the carotid canal and this is the jugular foramen and in anterior wall you will have the fossa now this is the point where you will have the styloid process and the styloid process is again the part of the temporal bone clear now these are the two occipital condyles now behind the occipital condyles you will have the depression is known as condylar fossa now here you can see that this condylar fossa is right now having a foramen in this bone so this is known as posterior condylar canal now where is the anterior condylar canal now if you want to see the anterior condylar canal you have to hold this skull in such position and now you can appreciate that this is the anterior condylar canal so anterior can condylar canal is known as hypoglossal canal because it will provide exit to the hypoglossal nerve so these are present anteriorly but they are not visible in such position because they lies on the upper part of the condyle so you can see here this is the hypoglossal canal or anterior condylar canal clear now what next is you will have some very uh, fine uh, canalic illusion in relation to the uh, your Uh, jugular foramen so here i will try to show you one one or two canaliculi now one is very important is known as mastoid canaliculi 
Now mastoid canaliculi is present in the lateral wall. So this is the lateral wall and in this lateral wall there is a small foramina and you can see that I am able to pass this wire in this uh, lateral wall of the uh, jugular canal. Now this is your mastoid canaliculi. Clear? Now three, through this mastoid canaliculi uh, the branch of vagus nerve that is auricular branch of vagus nerve enters laterally. In the same way you will have anteriorly uh, between the carotid canal and jugular foramen you have one more canaliculi and that canaliculi is for the your um, tympanic branch of uh, glossopharyngeal now and that is known as tympanic canaliculus. So where you will find the tympanic canaliculus? So this is the tympanic canaliculus in the anterior wall. So this small foramina where I am able to pass the tip of my wire is over this canaliculi. Clear? So the canaliculi is here. You can see the tip of the wire inside this canaliculi. So this is the area of um, tympanic canaliculi which is between the carotid canal. So you can see that carotid canal is anteriorly and the posteriorly the jugular foramen and in between you can see that tip of the wire is inside the canaliculi. So these are the some important features which you have to keep in mind when you are reading the norma basalis. Now apart from that we left some of the important um, few features. Now this is what is known as pterygoid hemulus. Now this is the pterygoid hemulus which is the lower end of your medial pterygoid plate. Clear? Then there are uh, one or two foramens. One is known as uh, pterygoid canal. Now pterygoid canal is present in the anterior wall of foramen lacerum but if you want to approach you can see that it is here. Now this is the pterygoid canal. Now in this uh, pterygoid canal you can pass uh, uh, any wire or some uh, sharp thing. So this is the pterygoid canal which is present in the upper part of the pterygoid process. Clear? So when you are reading the norma basalis, you have to understand the major concepts. Now this is the mastoid uh, process. Now this mastoid process is medially having the notch. Now this is known as mastoid notch. Now this mastoid notch will provide you can say attachment of the posterior belly of your digastric. Now next to that you can see that this is the groove. Now this groove is asked so many times in exam what is the structure lies in this groove. Now this groove is related with the your occipital artery. This groove is related with the occipital artery. Now this is the styloid process. This is the mastoid process in between them you will have this stylo mastoid foramina. Now through this foramina you know that facial nerve will come out. Clear? So these are the important bony features which you should know in the base of skull. Thank you.